Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'll be counting down 10 Walking Dead characters who died too soon on the TV show. This video does contain spoilers covering the entire run of the TV show as well as some major comic book spoilers so please do keep that in mind. Also please note that the entries in this list are in no particular order. So anyway without further ado, let's begin. I always thought it was a missed opportunity in The Walking Dead deciding to kill every single prisoner who Rick's group encountered in Season 3. I think it would have been interesting to have at least one of these guys prove themselves and become an important member of Rick's group. However, instead, they just all ended up being red shirts. Arguably, Axel was the prisoner who got the most development out of the five. He survived the longest and his character was given more screen time than the rest. Prior to his death, he was developing a friendship with Carol, which definitely had some flirtatious undertones, and despite being in jail, he came off as being quite likeable. It felt like he died just as he was starting to get interesting, and I would have liked to see more of him. The writers originally had something much more sinister planned for his character, and his death wasn't actually planned at all when Season 3's script was first written. Now allow me to introduce you to Thomas Richards. Thomas was a prisoner during the Walking Dead comic book prison arc who initially seemed like a nice guy, as evidenced by him helping out the women who were part of Rick's group. However, it turns out that instead of being a genuine nice guy, he's actually one of those nice guys, you know, the type who hate women. He beheads two of Herschel's daughters whilst they were in the prison barbers before then attempting to behead Andrew and Patricia before finally being killed by Maggie. It seems like TV Axel was originally going to follow in Thomas's footsteps. Lou Temple, who plays Axel, was quoted in May 2020 as saying, Axel was originally going to be a serial killer. He was going to take Beth out in the woods and slaughter her and was going to beat the shit out of Carol. When he told Carol that he was in prison because he robbed a store with a water pistol that was actually a lie, he was in fact a stone cold murderer. However, Lou says that on the day of filming he was told that his character's arc had changed, that it was decided the story was too dark and things needed to lighten up a bit. Now I'm not sure I'd necessarily be down with seeing Axel drag Beth out into the woods and kill her, but it's an interesting concept and I would have still liked to see his character stick around on the show for a bit longer. Another one of Season 3's casualties was T-Dog. Now that I think about it, there's actually four characters on this list from Season 3. For the record, I loved the third season. I think I ranked it as my favourite season when I ranked Seasons 1-7 to seven a couple of years ago. But my god, Glenn Mazzara, who was the showrunner at the time, was so trigger happy when it came to killing off characters. Was T-Dog the greatest ever character on The Walking Dead? Well, according to the One True Dog subreddit he was, apparently T-Dog knows all, sees all, and protects all. T-Dog is life. T-Dog is love. Praise the almighty T-Dog. Anyway, where were we? T-Dog was just a regular likeable guy. He never caused any intentional drama or trouble. He always did what he thought was best for the group, and he had a couple of great one-liners. The one that sticks out to me in particular is when the group are trying to get that fat bloated walker out of the well at Herschel's farm, with the end result being that walker ripping in half, contaminating the water. At which point T-Dog says, good thing we didn't do something stupid like shoot it. It's a shame that we never really learnt an awful lot about T-Dog compared to the rest of the cast. It's weird to think that he and Carol were both in similar positions in Season 3 with them both essentially just being extras. Carol, of course, has now gone on to become one of the main stars of the show. Who knows what the great Lord T-Dog would have achieved if he just had a bit more time. I've actually read some articles online which state that Carol was originally going to die instead of T-Dog. Just think, we could be living in a world where T-Dog blew up Terminus. A world where T-Dog did the look at the flowers scene. A world where T-Dog and King Ezekiel were lovers. Wait, what? Finally, I just want to point out that Ian E. Singleton, who played T-Dog, does seem like a genuinely nice bloke. I saw him at Walker Stalker Con in London a couple of years ago, and he really takes the time out to talk to everyone, and it's obvious that this guy still loves The Walking Dead, so I've got a lot of respect for him. Rest in peace, one true dog. The third and penultimate character on this list who died too early from season 3 is Merle. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. Merle was a bit of a prick. He was a racist asshole who helped the governor torture his ex-group. However, he sure was an entertaining and charismatic character. Michael Rooker is just a brilliant actor and he killed it in this role. And when you've got someone like Michael on the show, you need to keep hold of them. Like Axel, it also wasn't planned that Mel would die during the initial writing of the third season. Greg Nicotero said that the idea for his death came up minutes before shooting This Sorrowful Life, and he was actually supposed to be a recurring character in season 4. To me, having him stick around until at least season 4 makes much more sense. I mean, his character is entirely absent in Season 2, bar Daryl's hallucination during the episode Chupacabra, 
and he only appears twice in Season 1. It feels like we hardly see the guy, only for him to return in Season 3 and then he dies shortly after. I'll admit I do think that Daryl's reaction to seeing his brother reanimated in this sorrowful life is absolutely heartbreaking and an amazing moment in the show, but I still think that Mel was a fantastic character and you could have maybe moved this death, move it to Season 4, you could have had him die at the prison and then Daryl searching the prison grounds and he finds his brother is back as a walker. So yeah, Mel was a fantastic character and sadly I think Season 3 killed too many characters who would have improved the show going forward. Speaking of characters who should not have died in the third season, here we are with the final entry from season 3 on this list, Andrea. Sorry Laurie, you didn't make the cut, everyone is glad you're dead. Andrea was supposed to be on the show for much longer than she actually was. How do I know this? Well, Laurie Holden has said multiple times that she was contracted for 8 seasons of the show before the idea to kill her was brought up. And Laurie's comments regarding the decision to kill her character are pretty damning if I'm honest. She states that Andrea wasn't originally supposed to die in Season 3, rather she was supposed to end up being the leader of Woodbury's people. However, this was changed three weeks before the shooting of the season finale began. She went on to say that Mazzara's decision to kill her was purely for shock value. He wanted to kill someone for a shock, but he never read the comic book really. Wait a minute, the showrunner didn't even read the source material? Jesus, I might hate this guy more than I do Scott Gimple. I'm aware a lot of people found Andrea annoying during Season 3 due to her relationship with the Governor, and Laurie Holden seems to agree with this as well, as she says that I think the whole stuff they wrote about Andrea and the Governor was complete and utter nonsense. So as you can see from these quotes, it's fairly obvious that she's not happy in the manner in which her character was treated. Andrea's death itself was also extremely underwhelming. She was stuck in a cell with Milton and she was tied to a chair. Milton was slowly dying and turning into a walker. There were a pair of pliers on the floor which Andrea grabbed with her feet and she used them to try and cut her restraints. It appeared as if she had ample enough time to escape but she didn't cut the restraints quick enough and was bitten by Milton off screen. Her death felt really cheap to me at the time and with confirmation from Laurie that it was only done for shock value, well it makes sense why I felt that way. I haven't even mentioned that the comic book version of Andrea makes it all the way to the Whisper of War arc before dying. Therefore, if The Walking Dead had followed the source material, Andrea would be alive to at least season 10. She's a badass sniper in the comics and a real fan favourite. One of the things that surprised me when reading the comics was just how badly the TV show handled her character. Hopefully, if The Walking Dead does ever get a reboot in the future, it will give us a more comic book accurate version of Andrea. Although I can't fault The Walking Dead for killing Dale in Season 2, seeing as the actor did ask to leave the show, it would have been interesting if Dale had stayed around for a bit longer, seeing as he does make it past the prison arc and to Gabriel's church in the comic. In the comics, he and Andrea find themselves in a romantic relationship. With The Walking Dead being so full of brutality and despair, I found their coupling with the age gap and all to be strangely endearing. Both Dale and Andrea go through periods of self-doubt and both worry that they aren't good enough for the other person, with them both needing reassurance, which I think is actually quite sweet. Andrea becomes a bit jealous when Dale mentions his dead wife, and Dale becomes jealous and frustrated at the prison because he believes that Andrea will leave him due to his age and because of his amputated leg. I'm sure there might be some people out there who find their coupling weird due to their age difference, but I found it to be one of the best written romances in the comics, simply due to how Kirkman was able to portray that sense of self-doubt that some partners do experience when in love. In my opinion, it just added a very real human element to their relationship. I think that if Dale did stick around for longer in the TV show, we would have seen him and Andrea together, and then perhaps the Andrea and the Governor storyline would have never happened, which I think a lot of fans would have preferred. However, unlike some of the deaths on this list, at least I can say that Dale's TV show death did serve a purpose for the overall narrative. Rick felt like he had to honour Dale by sparing Randall, which caused an even bigger divide to form between Shane and Rick. So yes, although it would have been nice to see a more comic book accurate Dale on TV, his death is probably the one on this list which I have the least issue with. I'm pretty sure someone called me a simp in the comments on a previous video in which I talked about how much I like Jesse. And you know what? I won't even deny it. I am a total simp for Alexandra Breckenridge. I'd throw her husband out the window just to get the chance to date her. Anyway, Jesse's death in the TV show is comic accurate unlike every other single character on this list. However, the reason why I would have liked to see her stick around on the TV show for longer is because she's a far better character on the show than she is in the comics. In the comics, she's just kind of there. She isn't developed at all, and I didn't give a shit about her or her family when they all died. In the TV show, however, I was a bit annoyed when she ended up dying. The show had taken the time to transform Jessie from this beaten housewife to someone who stood up to her husband, someone who stood up for Rick when the people of Alexandria were questioning him, 
and someone who killed a wolf who entered her house with a pair of bloody scissors. She was basically another version of Carol, which is maybe why the writers decided to go down the comic book route and kill her, as maybe they thought that she was just too similar to Carol. But just imagine if she did survive the attack on Alexandria with both her kids dead. Perhaps she'd end up turning on Rick in the future. Maybe she would have joined Spencer in trying to sail Rick out to Negan. Or hell, she could have joined the Saviors. I just think there's more that could have been done with her character. Killing off all the Andersons at once meant that everything was wrapped up in a neat little package. However, I would have liked to see at least one of them survive just to see Rick deal with the fallout. And my pick of the bunch would have been Jesse. I'm going to put these two together because these entries go hand in hand. Firstly, Beth's death was dumb as hell. I included it in my Dumb Walking Dead Decisions video and I'm doing it again here. Beth went missing towards the end of Season 4. We find out where she is in Season 5 Episode 4 Slab Town. Rick's group then come up with a plan to save Beth. In Season 5 Episode 8 they reunite with her, with Beth simply needing to walk out the door outside to where her sister Maggie awaits her. Instead, for some bizarre reason, she tries to stab Dawn with a pair of scissors, which causes Dawn to inadvertently fire a gun, shooting Beth in the head, killing her. One of the most pointless deaths from the entire show in my opinion. Yes, I understand that Beth wanted to save Noah, but she could have left and come back for him later, she didn't have to attack Dawn like that and get herself killed. As often is the way with many characters on The Walking Dead, Beth died just as I was really starting to like her. At least one silver lining from her death is that Noah got to live, and I think most assumed Noah would be around on the show for a long time, seeing as Beth's character seemed to have been killed off just so Noah could take her place, but nope, Noah himself dies six episodes later. I have to admit that Noah's death doesn't annoy me as much as it did when I first watched it. I mean, it's probably the most gruesome death on the show, only second to Glenn's. I mean, we see a walker rip open his mouth and his face. It's disgusting, and it's definitely a memorable moment. And his death also does serve a purpose in showing what an arsehole and a coward Nicholas is, and ultimately feels like it did make sense to the overarching plot, more so than Beth's did. However, it's still a hard pill to swallow knowing that Beth died to save Noah, and then Noah himself dies only a couple of episodes later. Some of you are probably yelling at me right now saying that I shouldn't put Abraham on this list considering he outlives his comic book counterpart in a TV show. And whilst that may be the case, I still think that having Negan kill both Abraham and Glenn in the same episode was simply the wrong decision. Losing two big characters, two fan favourites in one episode was just too much for some fans to deal with. And this brought about the beginning of the steady decline in The Walking Dead's viewing figures. Glenn's death would have been enough, Ava didn't have to die as well. I mean, what's the first thing when you think of, when you think of Season 7 Episode 1? It's most likely going to be Glenn dying, isn't it? It's going to be a picture of Glenn with his eyeball popping out, or Negan leaning over him, taunting him. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of the Season 7 premiere. Sadly, no one really gives a second thought to Abraham. His death was massively overshadowed by Glenn's, and I don't believe he should have had to share his death with anyone else. Abraham's comic book death was taken by Denise on the TV show, and I thought that maybe because of this change, Abraham was safe. I also distinctly remember reading somewhere that Kirkman regretted the rather random manner in which Abe died in the comics, commenting that he would have been a great character to have around during the All Out War arc due to his military background. The war with the Saviors in Season 8 would have been Abe's time to shine, but sadly we never got to see Abe fight along Rick and call Negan a son of a dick. I understand that Negan picked Abe from the lineup to kill him because he saw him as a threat, but I still wish he'd stayed around a bit longer. Come on, you must have known this one was coming, there's no way I could make this list without including Carl Grimes. Now if I'm being honest, I never particularly cared for Carl on the TV show, which I know is going to get me a lot of hate but I found him to be kind of irritating most of the time and I much prefer Carl from the comics. However, I still think that killing Carl in Season 8 was a dumbass decision, especially considering that in the source material, Carl plays a pretty major role in the Whisperer arc. Instead of Henry, Carl was supposed to be the one who fell in love with Lydia, and he was supposed to be the one who went after her when Alpha took her back from the hilltop. For the record, I really liked Season 9's Henry, and I'm aware that I'm one of the few people who did, as evidenced by some of the comments posted on the In Defense video that I made covering his character. However, although I liked Henry, I still feel really bad for Chandler Riggs. I mean, Carl was killed off before arguably his character's best story arc was about to take place, which is just so unfair. Not to mention the fact that Chandler purchased a house where near The Walking Dead is filmed because he thought he'd be on the show for the foreseeable future, only to then be told, nope, sorry kid, you're out. The Walking Dead comics even end with an older Carl reading a story to his kid about the trials that he and his father went through. I guess The Walking Dead TV show could adapt this with Judith instead of Carl, but if there was ever a character who was supposed to make it to the end of the story, Carl was that character. In addition, I really don't like the narrative reasoning for Carl's death. 
He pretty much became a pacifist overnight in Season 8. After he was bit by a walker, he sent letters to his dad and Negan begging them to stop fighting. Basically, the writers tried to use his death as the catalyst for ending the war. We have to stop fighting because of Carl. Negan, Carl said we have to stop fighting. Oh, okay, Rick, I'm really upset now. Guess I'll stop fighting and stand here about to cry because I'm sad about Carl. Even though at the end of Season 7 I was only prevented from bashing his head in by a flying tiger. Come on, what the hell? There was really no need to use Carl in the Peacemaker role considering The Walking Dead had a character in Morgan who'd been preaching about life being precious for the past two seasons. Instead of having Morgan fighting the war, he should have just carried on preaching about peace. Then he should have died. Rick would have wanted to honour his legacy by sparing Negan and bringing about peace. Also, with Morgan being dead, he wouldn't have been able to cross over to Fear the Walking Dead and mess that show up as well. And Carl's death itself is just really lame in my opinion. Sadiq asked him to help some walkers to free their souls, so he helps Sadiq do this and then he gets bitten by one. Now, these walkers weren't actually posing any threat. Carl could have just walked past them. If I was Carl, I would have politely declined Sadiq's offer. I would have said, look, sorry dude, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in this. You can put your life at risk killing walkers in order to cleanse their souls, but no way I'm doing that. I really think that Carl's death was the final nail in the coffin for The Walking Dead. After all the shit viewers went through with Dumps the Gate, the Season 6 cliffhanger ending, the fact that Season 7 itself is a bloody mess, killing Carl was for many the straw that broke the camel's back. Personally speaking, I love Season 9 of The Walking Dead, and I also enjoyed 10, although not as much. Did I miss Carl during these seasons? No, not really. Do I think he should have been in them though? Absolutely. There you go, there's my list of 10 Walking Dead characters who died too soon on the TV show. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you like this video? Is there anyone I might have missed out? Are there some of the choices that I chose? Do you agree with them? And let me know your own personal lists in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, take care, goodbye.